We've shown that after r iterations of the subroutine, this angle phi of r, the angle between the state we're in and s prime, is equal to 2r plus 1 times the inverse sine of root 1 over 2 to the n, where n is the number of qubits we're using. And when this angle is equal to pi over 2, the state we're in is equal to x star, the special state that we were looking for. You may have noticed something interesting happens if we're using two qubits, that is, if n equals 2. In this case, the argument to the inverse sine is root 1 over 4, or 1 half. And the inverse sine of 1 half is pi over 6. So if we apply the subroutine a single time, that is, if r equals 1, then phi of r is equal to 3 times pi over 6, or pi over 2, which means the state we're in after one application of the subroutine is the special state, x star. So if we were to make a measurement of the system after applying the subroutine a single time, we're guaranteed to find the system to be in the state x star. This is a pretty simple illustration of the power of Grover's algorithm. Because n equals 2, there are four possible values for x star, 0, 1, 2, or 3. So in the classical case, we could have to check up to three values to be sure of the value of x star. But in the quantum case, a single query of the oracle is sufficient to guarantee that we found the state x star. Okay, before we go and implement Grover's algorithm, for the case of two qubits, I want to review something that we've seen a couple times before, and that is how to get a negative sign in front of a basis state. The trick to doing this is to note that if we have the state 1 over root 2 times 0 minus 1, and we apply a not gate to the state, we swap the rules of the 0 and the 1. The interesting thing is that swapping the rules of the 0 and the 1 is equivalent to just adding a negative sign to this state. We can, of course, create the state 1 over root 2, 0 minus 1 by applying a Hadamard gate to the state 1. And then if we apply a second Hadamard gate after knotting the state 1 over root 2, 0 minus 1, we end up with the state 1 again, but this time with a coefficient of negative 1. So this is how you would negate the amplitude of the state 1. From this, it's pretty easy to see how you would do it for the state 0. Uh, you apply a not gate to the state 0, and that creates the state 1. We go through the same process to get a negative coefficient in front of the state 1, and then we apply a not gate at the end. And that gives you a negative 1 in front of the state 0. So this is how you get a negative sign in front of the basis states for a single qubit system. But we're looking at a two qubit system. How do you do it in that case? It's basically the same procedure, except instead of performing this knot unqualified, we do a controlled knot based on the state of the second qubit. So now we only get a negative sign if the control bit is a one. And doing this allows us to get a negative sign in front of any of the four basis states, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1, based on selectively applying not gates and then following this procedure. Now we're finally in a position to implement Grover's algorithm for two qubits using the IBM quantum experience. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new custom topology because we're only using two qubits instead of five, and I want to be able to connect them with any gates we need rather than the limitations you get when you use the actual architectures. So the first step of Grover's algorithm is to create the uniform superposition. And we do that by applying a Hadamard gate to each of our qubits. So after these two Hadamard gates, our system will be in the uniform superposition. The next step is to apply the subroutine, which first applies the oracle and then the Grover diffusion operator. So let's set up an oracle to mark the state 1, 1, as our special state is going to be the state 1, 1. 
we just looked at how to do this. We apply a Hadamard gate followed by a control not gate followed by another Hadamard gate. So what this will do is if this second qubit here is in the state one, this Hadamard gate puts it in the state one of root two, zero minus one. And then if the first qubit is also in the state one, then this not gate is applied, which adds a negative sign in front of the state one over root two, zero minus one. Then the second Hadamard gate will undo the superposition and put us back into the state one, but with a negative sign, again, if this first qubit was also in the state one. So that's, that's the oracle. The next thing we need to do is implement the Grover diffusion operator. And we said it's easiest to do this if we apply a Hadamard gate to each of the qubits and then do a reflection about zero followed by two more Hadamard gates rather than doing a reflection about the uniform superposition. So this is easier because a reflection about zero is the same thing as negating the amplitude on any of the basis states aside from zero and leaving zero unchanged. So we know how to negate the amplitude in front of the state one one. We just did that. Do it like this. Apply a Hadamard gate, apply a controlled knot, and then apply another Hadamard gate. So it's pretty straightforward to go from here to doing this for the state uh, one zero. We'll just put a knot gate in front of that first qubit and then do the same thing. So what we just did is now if this qubit, this first qubit is a zero coming in, after the knot gate, it'll be in the state one when it acts as the controlled bit on this controlled knot. So what this gate does is it'll negate the amplitude in front of the state um, one zero, which is what we want it to do. And finally, we have to apply another knot gate because we don't actually want to modify the state of this first qubit. So this is just undoing that first knot. So we've handled the case of one one and one zero. The remaining case is zero one. And of course that's symmetric to one zero. So we can just turn this implementation upside down. So there we go. These three sets of gates implement a reflection about the state zero. Do that by negating the amplitude in front of all of the states except for the state zero. And if we want this to be a reflection about S, we have to remember to follow it with two Hadamard gates. So now this whole thing from these two Hadamard gates to these two Hadamard gates is the Grover diffusion operator, or equivalently a uh, reflection about the uniform superposition. Now the final thing to do is to make a measurement on both qubits. Measure the first qubit and measure the second qubit. And if everything is implemented correctly, we should find the system to be in the state one one at this point. Let's see if we set everything up right. Great, yep, we're in the state one one with probability one. So we found X star after one query to the Oracle. Now let's prove that this actually works. So we said that this is the Oracle here and it's selecting the state one one. Let's see if it works to select a different state. Let's say one zero. Um, we saw how to do that. All we do is add a not gate to this first qubit and then undo that after it acts as the control bit for the control knot. So this should select the state one zero. Awesome, it does. So it seems like this is actually an implementation of Grover's algorithm. I'll, I'll go ahead and do the last two just to really convince you. So this should select the state zero, zero. And it does. And finally, if we want to select the state zero, one, that's again, symmetric to the one, zero. So we can just turn these gates around. And this is the oracle where x star equals one zero. So we should find the system to be in the state um, zero one, sorry, it'll show up as zero one upon measurement. 
And indeed we do. So we see that this algorithm applying the oracle followed by the Grover diffusion operator finds the special state x star with probability one. So there you have it, an implementation of Grover's algorithm on IBM's quantum experience. One final thing I wanna mention is that my implementation here of the reflection about zero isn't an efficient one. Um, in the last video, I said you can perform this reflection by oring all the qubits together and then using that as a control bit on a controlled knot to do the same trick to get a negative sign in front of the state of the system. And this is an efficient implementation because the number of gates it requires scales as the number of qubits. So if you have twice as many qubits, then you can perform this reflection about the state zero uh, using twice as many gates. Whereas in the implementation I gave, we're explicitly getting a negative sign in front of all of the basis states. And there's two to the n basis states where n is the number of qubits. So in this case, if we're dealing with more qubits, the number of gates needed to implement this reflection about zero grows exponentially, which is of course inefficient and defeats the purpose of Grover's algorithm in the first place. So this isn't the implementation of the reflection about zero that you would use in the real world. I just think it's more useful for pedagogical purposes. It's easier to understand what's going on, especially in the case of two qubits.